I'm Marinero, the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk. Four days ago, four days ago, Vincent Detouche of Apple TV and MLS Season Pass reported that Toronto FC and the Columbus crew were both very interested in the services of CF Montreal center back Rudy Camacho. Last night, my colleague Jeremy Filosa of 98.5 FM and EMFC Radio and the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk, reported that Rudy Camacho and CF Montreal were done, 100% over, finished, and that the team would make an announcement shortly thereafter. Well, earlier today, precisely at 11.34 a.m., CF Montreal did exactly that. They announced the departure of Rudy Camacho, a trade to the Columbus crew, in return for $400,000 in GAM. $200,000 $200,000 this year, $200,000 next year. Needless to say, the fans aren't happy. We'll get to that. Are CF Montreal a better team? Does this make sense? Was he a player that they should have traded? How much does this affect the team the rest of the season? Are they throwing in the towel on a possible playoff participation? So many unanswered questions. We're going to try and tackle them right here for the very first time. On the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk, Safian Benzaza and Nilton George of Can Football Club and Couscous Pity Pity join me, I'm Marinaro. Turn up your volume because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk. Here's the chance. Is the chance, they've got the goal, absolutely incredible, Cameron Porter delivers the goal to send Montreal Impact into the CONCACAF Champions League semi-final. The sickest CF Montreal podcast, it's gonna be sick, sick. Marinero, the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk. You're watching us right now live on YouTube and live on Twitter. Like I said, for the very first time ever, Safian Benzaza and Nilton George of Can Football Club in Cusco's Pity Pity join me on the Sick Podcast. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having hey. me have us on, man. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Tony, it feels, it feels special. It feels like, you remember when the ECW invade WWF? <laughs> yes, I, I remember that, of course. Yes, we go. It's, it's the same right now. So yeah. CPP invade the sick podcast. Yes. <laughs> I wanted this to happen a long time ago, but I'm telling you, your agent is not easy. Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> but we one? finally were able to come to an agreement. All right, guys, let's tackle it right away. Once again, Vincent Detouche of Apple TV MLS season pass reported it four days ago that there was interest in CF Montreal center back Rudy Camacho, who was playing in the final year of his contract. We also know there's a surplus of defenders on this team. The teams he brought up were Toronto FC, uh, which would make sense because he likes the city of Toronto, and it's another Canadian market. Of course, there's a question of citizenship. And Columbus, which makes sense because his former coach, Wilfred Nancy, is the coach there. Very familiar with the system, and there would not be a period of adaptation. You'd have to think he could just go in, and he would fit like a glove. And earlier this morning, it was announced that 11.34 a.m. precisely, once again, CF Montreal mm-hmm. announced it. And uh, first off, your thoughts. Nilton, you first. I was first surprised by the uh, the, uh, the rumor of uh, Vincent Dintouche and the confirmation uh, for uh, given by uh, Filosa uh, yesterday. But I was even more surprised by the reaction of the fans. The fans are so angry about that trade. It's like it's look. They feel like it's uh, a trahison. So I'm a bit more surprised by the reaction than by the trade, as the trade. Itself. Speaking of which, all right, because you brought that up <laughs> on that CF Montreal post. If you go to the replies, this is what you're going to see, folks. One after another. Let's bring them up. Right here. We're one point out of the playoffs with a game in hand on DC. Selling off our most experienced defender sends a clear message. Don't expect us to care if you don't. This coming in from Justin Shepard says, Jer Falcon, n'importe quoi, $400,000 of GAM for our best defense defender. Um, uh, Not a very good Mercado. Renard out. 
Um, other ones, this coming in from uh, Andrew Potter, terrible, but it's not like the team is playing this summer anyway. Others, bring them up. Etienne Lavoie, quelle déception. What a letdown. Tiago, unbelievable. This club is going nowhere. Stephanie Saputo, quand il vient de vendre un joueur sans réinvestir. Saputo is like a kid in a candy store when he sells a player and he doesn't have to reinvest. Sylvain Dicard, c'est qui le prochain? Piet, who's next? Samuel Piet, more replies coming in. Fresh Brady, okay. C'était quoi le but de faire ça? Vider le stade. What's the goal of doing this? To empty the stadium? Richard Mousseau. Hey, ça nous donne un message positif plein d'espoir. Hey, what a message this is. Sam Savvy says, merci pour les souvenirs. Est arrivé à Montréal un total inconnu et parti comme étant un des excellents défenseurs de la MLS. Thank no. you for the souvenirs. Came in Montreal as a relatively unknown and left MLS. It's one of the better defenders. Charles says, rendu là, dites-le. Si ça ne vous tente pas d'être en MLS. At that point, tell us if you don't want to be in MLS. Others, we're not done yet, guys, even though you think we're not done. Ricky, n'importe quoi, vous échangez votre meilleur défenseur, un leader pour seulement 400 000. Arrête de défaire cette équipe. Vous n'avez pas réalisé qu'il vous manque un dépit de qualité, un attaquant. Tabarouette! Ceci ne me donne vraiment pas le goût d'acheter des billets. Who says, I can't believe it, you're getting rid of your best defender for $400,000. You're dismantling the team. You haven't realized yet that you need a quality DP. You need a striker. And you're not really giving me uh, any uh, temptations of going out and buying tickets. Kozuki says, shame. You clearly don't know what sense of belonging is. Saputo, out. And Martin Beliveau says, Modique was at the Sileme. Man, you guys are <laughs> tough to love. Do we have any more? Do we have any more? <laughs> No, that's oh, no, it for now. Man. All right, okay. For now. You get the point. Sofian, you read these replies. You say what? I say that this is uh, the straw that broke the camel's back for uh, a lot of fans. And uh, for you? Uh, for me, it's a, sh it's not a, it's a, it's a shock more than a surprise. I'm shocked by the fact that Camacho was going to be moved. But at the end, when you think about it, you know, you get value from a player who's not going to come back. Name, maybe not even come back in MLS, so you get some, you know, allocation money to do something with it. But it's a bit surprising because honestly, how can I say that? Whatever <clears throat> Olivier Renard has been saying, and also Gabriel Gervais and the club in general, has been happening. It's not like they were hiding that they were not do projects or they would try, they were not trying to get value from their assets as much as possible. They have set up this plan from the beginning since Renard came in. So there's a bit of shock, but not as much surprise because this has been talked about. Now, when we see actions coming in through difficult times... Now, hold on a second. Whose plan yes, is this? Olivier Renard's or Joey Saputo's? Well, you could say both. Olivier Renard is the executioner of the business plan that Joey Saputo has imposed, uh, has asked for him to, to execute, I suppose. Honestly, I'm not in the room. Did Joey Saputo uh, say to Renard, I need to lose less money? Okay, I'll, I'll help you with that. I'm not sure what, what, what they talk about exactly. But the execution is being done by Olivier Renard, and he said mm -hmm. it. I'm here to invest, sell uh, buy low, sell high. And I think maybe we can talk about it later. But what happened is in the first two years, uh, under Renard and Nancy's reign has been so amazing and so you know positive that I, it set the bar so, too high, so high that anything would happen yeah. after would be honestly, uh, would look like sound lame, would sound like sub All right, I That's say this voila. today. So, July 31st, today, July 31st, everyone knows whether you're following this team or you're not, that right now, the two most capable defenders on this team, prior to the trade, of course, were Rudy Camacho and Gabriele Corbo. You correct me if I'm wrong. Those were the two most capable defenders as of right now, July 31st. What we do know is this, though. We know that Camacho's contract was up. We know that he probably would have wanted to have a multi-year deal, or at least a couple of years, okay? We know that he probably would have wanted to have in the money that he was already making. We know that this team has a philosophy that they want to invest in young players. And when I say invest, either through GAM money, purchase and or GAM money, maximum purchase would probably be a million dollars either way, probably taking players on loan, probably getting players free transfers, <clears throat> making deals 
intra-league, playing those players, showcasing those players, and then selling off those players. We also know this team has a lot of defenders. Corbo is one. Waterman's another. Uh, Campbell's another. Thorkelson's another. Um, uh, Alvarez that they just bought is another. Yes. Um, and uh, Nabong, uh, uh, the young guy. J- Jabang, 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 Jabang is another. Jabang. By the way, yeah. I like him, man. I like him yeah. for what it's worth. Jabang is another. They have a lot of defenders. So I'm going to say this. I don't think it's the end of the world that they traded Rudy Camacho. I think there's been an over-exaggeration from some of the fans on social media, to be honest. I believe that even though he is one of the two best defenders on this team, that it's not going to be the end of the world that he's gone. I do understand, however, I do understand those who are upset Mm -hmm. because they lost one of their best players on the team. I do understand those who are upset because you're trying to make the playoffs, or at least that's what the fans think you're trying to do. You just got worse in the short term. No. Nope. Yes. Nothing. You got worse, right? So worse? I, I'm not so sure about that. It it, it, it was in the last maybe two oh, years. Oh, oh, hold on a second. You don't think that if they put Gregory Campbell in Camacho's spot right now that they're worse by at least thirty three percent? Oh no, th- th- that's too much. Th- th- that's pretty too much. We, we I disagree with you, Nelson. I disagree. Uh, we get Nelson, focused. Nelson, so have you seen Campbell third- play? Yeah, I, I saw Campbell, but I saw. Rudy played before too. He was not that good about two years ago. People, what the same people who are posting below of the CF Montreal post were the same that wasn't there to defend him when he was so bad, when he was taking red cards on key moment, was he was when he was in the first two, three years, so difficult to have time. Yeah, but that's not fair. To the no, MLS. That's, but no, that's not but fair. right that's now, fair. but no, no, let me finish. But right now, they have some people to replace him. Corbo, let's let's compare 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 Corbo and Rudy Camacho. Uh, he, he, I think in in maybe in a year, he's gonna be better than Camacho. I like Corbo very much. We agree, but about now he's talking about the playoffs. And, and next then, year is next year. And we and we just put one million real real money. Okay, we just put one million dollar on the under twenty player who plays for Colombia, not a bad team, who got eliminated by Italy, not a bad team. We need those minutes. I know if it was Egil, Camacho will stay this season and finish this season. But if this time the agent made a good job, right now, maybe he, he's got on his pocket an offer for yes. the next year. Not like the last time we was uh, trying to convince everybody in MLS to give him a contract and nobody gave him the money that he wants. But now, because it's six months before the end of the contract, he can legally take some offers for the next year. So if Rudy Camacho present to Olivier Renard a plan for next year and it's way off his budget, why not, why not trading him right now? It's not idle. It's not a good communication move. But... It's not so. It's not so bad as it seems to be for but, some. Some. But people. the context is okay. It's not so bad. But the context comes within a, an elimination for the League's Cup after the magical two-two against Pumas, the defeat against DC United. You say to yourself, "Well, the magic is gone." And at a team that's struggling to try to make the playoffs, they're one point behind the eighth spot, I think, and uh, and and basically the ninth spot. Sorry, and and basically I think it's just an accumulation of like. The up and downs of this season, new coach, new staff, new everything basically. And people, uh, fans are trying to really, you know, try to fall in love again with this team after having given this team two years of like, I would love you guys, you you play great soccer. It's kind of difficult. So I think this direction is normal. I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's acceptable every time, but it's kind of understandable looking at the situation of the club, you know, since, since June, July. This is, this is what the fans' reaction is, Sofia, and you talked about it, okay? For the fans, Rudy Camacho was one of them. Let me explain. Um, the fans of this team primarily are Francophones because they alienated the Anglophones for the longest time. It's like the Anglophones in the West Island, they don't even know CF Montreal exists, okay? Uh, I'm sure if you do surveys and stuff like that, whatever, you ask everyone coming in, whether they're a Francophone or an Anglophone, it's, it's 80% Francophone of this team, okay? So the fans of this team are Francophones, all right? 
For them, even though Rudy Camacho wasn't born in Montreal or he wasn't born in Quebec City, okay, he came here with a perfect French, of course, with his background being what it was. And he was humble. He was nice. He was caring. He was a good teammate. After the games, he would go to the fans. He'd give them the salute. He'd be available after the games. He would do interviews. He was out there. So they embraced them. I believe the frustration that you're seeing on the social media is a frustration that has a lot to do with this. They feel like they lost one of their own. It's almost, almost, and wouldn't be as bad, but it would. this would be, if they would trade Piet, you know, there would be a revolution. Okay. Yeah, right. It's it's not to that point, but it's from, it's from that, 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 that family of what I'm trying to talk about now. So that's number one. Number two, the timing. Once again, their next game is August 20th. They're going to need to go. They're going to have a, have a push here to make the playoffs. If they don't make the playoffs, a lot of people are going to look at trading Rudy Camacho and saying, that's why you didn't make the playoffs because you should have kept Rudy Camacho. And the others is, is that guys, and this is the most important thing out of all of it. They've tried to sell the media, the plan. They've tried to sell the fans, the plan. And the plan is this plan of once again, young players playing them, showcasing them and then selling them. No one bought the plan guys. Nobody likes the plan. I was at practice on Friday. It was me and Filosa. There was nobody else there covering this team. The media is there in the summer because the Canadians are off. When it's non-game day and they don't have to be there, they won't be there. The second the Canadians are back, no one's going to cover this team. The media is waiting for the Canadians to come back so they don't have to talk about this team. And it just, it doesn't work, guys. But this you don't, is, but, but you don't build a team for the media to talk about it. Who cares? Who cares if the media won't talk about it? The, the, does the people on the media or the fans who are, who are so critical right now have a football culture? 95% of the clubs have that kind of plan. Take players, transform them in better t better players, and, and sell them with profit. Everybody does that. It's, we're not unique. Yeah. Where? Outside, Where? outside the, Where? Out, uh, in the world, Where? outside the Champions, uh, outside the Champions League winners in Europe, that's that, and, that's uh, ten, ten teams. Exactly. Uh, outside them, everyone else is is trying to buy and sell at different levels, at different scales. Tony, but Sofian, yeah, but, but, so but, but for me, said is true. What Nilton said is true. But here's yeah, the difference. Here's the difference. It's not in the North American mentality. That's the difference. It will change. And it's and, not that. It's not that true. You 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 are in North America and you get the plan. The yes. people that follow soccer get the plan. Hold on a second. I look. If this was Italy, and it's Joey Saputo's Bologna, mm -hmm. right? And you know that in Italy, the same teams win all the time, right? Yep. Juventus, Inter Milan, AC Milan, and now Napoli won. All right. Yep. For the most part, it's the same teams that win. Empoli doesn't win championships. Udinese doesn't win championships. Bologna doesn't win championships. Fiorentina doesn't win championships. Okay? It's the same teams that win. Exactly. There's there's bigger fish and there's smaller fish. Mm -hmm. And that happens the same thing in England. It's the same thing in Spain. It's the same thing in Portugal. It's always the three or four top dogs that win. So you can understand when there's a team that has the philosophy to say, hey, no pressure. We know we're not going to win. We want to be middle of the pack like that. We don't have to sweat out a relegation. We're going to invest in some players, young players, showcase them, sell them, make money, keep doing the same thing every year. The fans get used to it, this, that, whatever, but they know they're not going to make champions. They know they're not going to make Europa. They know they're going to finish middle of the pack. Everyone understands that. This is different. Do you recall the press conference that took place? I think about seven years ago now, the owner of this team, was sitting at a table with Adam Braz, his then technical director or sporting director, or whatever title they gave him. They were sitting at a table, and the owner of this team 
basically said that this team, this club, was going to win an MLS Cup within five years. Yeah. This ownership group should not be a little fish in this league. They should be able to compete. Now, is the league getting bigger and bigger every day? Yes. Will it get maybe a one point too big yeah. even for them? Maybe yes, but 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 Joey was used to be the big fish before. He was used to be the rich guy who buy the better players of the league. But that that's over. He cannot do it. He cannot do what he was able to do before twenty five years ago. Maybe the problem it was when he, he tried to use that that strategy to, big, to bring big names like Nesta, Ferrari, uh, Drogba. He saw that the people wasn't there for that so he changed the plan it, it, I, i'm i'm not uh, 100 no, 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 behind him but i understand why he changed the plan because yeah, if, so he yeah, yeah. if he wants if he wants to to win he needs to do something different of yeah. lefc of, of now atlanta if he tries to be uh, the same strategy but with less budget and and less Nilton. interest from the fan it would be impossible but Nilton, yeah. are they going to win like this Nilton, are they going to win like this? The second offense, he's no. a player who becomes good. He's gone. They're not going to win like this. I agree, now, but, you, hold on. So, Sophia, yeah. I got to add this. When Nilton says, when Nilton says he can't do it, he doesn't want to do it because you and I know that he, they have the means to do it. Hey. Yeah, but, but, but Tony, uh, Joey Saputo also said they'd be losing $10, $11 million a year, U.S., during that same press conference around the same time. Yes, so he's been losing money and money. It's he never hit that, and he's always been. But do you the think club. fans of a team team care how much money you no. lose? No, no, no. The it's true. They, the, they also they also came in at forty million, you know, and they're yes. valued at four hundred million Tony, today. Tony, I, I, Tony, I totally agree. But was he, Tony, you know what is the problem with this team? If it's not the owner that because he has the he has the money to do business, the team doesn't have the staff to make business with the with the assets that the that the owner can bring. If Montreal wasn't able to make money with Drogba, when they're gonna be able to do money with stars? Yeah, but right they didn't now, market Drogba right, well. They didn't market Drogba yeah. well. That, that's what I'm saying. Right now, they have a guy who was who is able to take the assets, the, the young players, and transform in profit. Now the team will need to have marketers to bring superstars and make money with it. They need yeah. to have interest in that a new stadium. And yeah. make money with that stadium right now. If they're gonna get a guy for his name, do they have? The, 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 hold on a second. But Nilton the, raises a great point. But Nilton, yeah, if you're have supposed to have in key departments eight mm -hmm. people working and you have three, but it's, it's my fault. It's my fault. No, no, I agree. <laughs> but I think I think that that's why I agree with Nilton. You know, he talks it, about it, marketing. It, I got a great idea. When the season starts, don't take vacation. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That, that's but, a good point. But, <laughs> but, but, but Tony, I think the plan with Olivier Renard is an interesting plan if it's able to give you regular cash flow to be able to justify to the board that, yes, we can invest. And when you have the structure, the infrastructure around everything to be as strong and as solid as possible, then you're ready to, to bring in that one star, half a star that could really give you a little buzz, give you wins. And it doesn't have to be Dragway. It could be, uh, I forget his name, that Greek striker for Atlanta. That could be like that guy, a 26, 27 year old striker. The man, not even as known as Drogba, but can score goals, can bring excitement. But is the club structured to be able the to The striker they should have got is Kutsias, who's playing for Chicago. He's a yeah. 2004, who at the time belonged to Axia, by the way. So it's not like he wasn't available because they have each yeah. other on speed dial. So exactly. you know what? He could have been, <laughs> like, been, been the guy. But, and, but you, you understand and, my point, Tony? At what point, at what point, I believe he could have been had. There was a, a, a clause that kicked in. He could have been had, I think, for a couple mm -hmm. of million dollars. They should have jumped on him. But once again, I think they didn't because uh, we're not buying players for $2 million. But, Sofiane, mm -hmm. you need to know the city you're playing in mm -hmm. and who your fans are. This is Montreal. Do you understand? The Montreal Canadiens, the team that is number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five in this city and in this province, okay, they, they have didn't want anything in 30, they didn't you're want right. anything in 30 years. You're right. You're right. But they spoiled a lot of people by winning 24 championships in their history. So when and that's good marketing, not, that's good marketing. Nilton, 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 when they're not winning something now, when they're not winning something now, okay, 
Now's the time to pounce on op an opportunity to say, you know what? One mm -hmm. team's not mm -hmm. winning. Let us do the winning. Think about this, though. The Montreal Canadiens don't win, but they have a rebuilding plan, and you see what they're going to do. They're rebuilding. Mm -hmm. But in two years or three years, when Caulfield and Suzuki become their yeah. best, they're not going to trade them, Nilton. Yeah. But it's not the same sport. But it's a different they, they business. But, I know, I know. It's but, 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 but Tony, I'm going back to my initial point at the beginning, at the beginning of the show. Uh, unless Olivier Renard, and I think he's good at what he does, is able to recreate every two years a combo of Mialovic, Kony, Alistair Johnson, Kamal Miller, and Piet, every two years, this club will be will be fine. My name win, my, my name win the cup. It will be very competitive. But that's very difficult to do. Do they have the means? Do they have the scouting? Do they have the, uh, the <clears throat> discretionary budget to be able to Pounds on an opportunity if there is. If I need to spend $2 million on a player and yeah. it's worth it, do they have the authorization so, so and budget to be able years, to do it? You think they're going to be able to get no, a, an Ishmael saying. Kone from their backyard? No, no they're that, not going to be able that, to. That's what I'm saying. Unless they can do that, they need to go progressively every year, be smart about it. Mind, right now, you, mind you, I knew he was going to be that good, but their academy <laughs> cut him three times. Three times. That's true. But, but, <laughs> but, Tony's uh, angry. <laughs> but, uh, but for, 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 the academy is amazing, but Tony, the best player Money. The best local Money. player to ever come out here Money. was Did a player that played to the for good an person. Club. Did you talk but, to the good person? Person, but <laughs> but uh, but you know, for, for example, okay, for example, it depends yeah. on what tools they use. For example, the U22 initiative from MLS, where you can sign a DP who's under 22 and yes. and have a low budget charge. Right now, recently, Montreal has not been doing well between Matko Milovic. Yes, it's a disaster. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> exactly. So but between Matko Milovic, he's the, the the poster child for Montreal right now. Who was that one? Jason Vargas? And I forget the, the other player who's... Uh, right now, but, it's Matko, it's Sunusi, and Torquesson. So right now, it's not really a great image, but other clubs also make the same mistakes, but the clubs are winning, are investing heavily on these players, and they're performing. So, and again, I go back to my to my hangover from last year. I'm yes. still used to Wilfred Nancy's style of play. I'm so used to that. I agree with you. I, I agree that, with you. I, I well, think that was so many. That yes, was but there, was so, there were so many factors coming in and, and, and variables that at the end, you bring Losada, that poor guy, he has to handle all that pressure. And a Mercato that was not as as efficient, as, as good as it could have been to help him out. And okay. I think, honestly, I think he's doing miracles. But what okay. he have. Okay. But, so, so now I, I'm going to get back to what I said before. Hear me out, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not being critical here, okay, because I have an axe to grind. I'm being critical here because I actually care and I want it to work. This doesn't work. This selling, play, selling, you become, okay, we hope you become good. We sell you. We hope you become good. We sell you. We hope we become yeah. What message are you sending to the fans? What? You're, you're sending a message that you're of no ambition whatsoever, that you're not going to win a championship, that you're not mm -hmm. going to play with the big boys, that you're not going to spend money. What are we doing here? We're, we're just trying to make a buck off of it. Why don't we do this? Get sponsored by Marche Opus. <laughs> Let's buy toilet paper. Let's buy toilet paper. Let's keep it on the team bench or put, actually throw it on the field for a couple of games. Make the value of the toilet paper rise. Sell the toilet paper for a profit of 25 cents. What are we doing? What are we doing? But Tony, here, Tony, exactly? we won't be able to sell all these guys. We're talking like we are the, the Real Madrid of, uh, we have the men, the La Masia in Montreal and Rue Sherbrooke. We won't be able to sell all these guys. It was once in a life the last, the last winter. We won't maybe never be able to sell yeah. a, a Sirois. We maybe never but be able... But tell that to Sofian. Sofian was just saying, yeah, but hold on a second. If they have Mihalovic and they have Johnston... And no, they have no I didn't say that. I, I, I didn't say that. I said, unless they can repeat that every two years, ah, okay. they need to go incremental every year. Small okay. wins. And like, and that's why I bought the U22 initiative point. Uh, for these, uh, with these three guys right now, it's not going well. It's not going well. Even yeah, to perform a, yeah. on the pitch for, for the club, even to be able to sell them. And all clubs, I think most clubs make mistakes. In MLS, you can see most, I don't know how many DPs have came to this league in the last yeah, five years. I, I mean, Atlanta make a lot of mistakes and yeah. they're, they're paying for it right now. Exactly. Exactly. They pay a lot. Of, Toronto has made the biggest mistakes because they repeated the model that got them the MLS. So, so, so let me say this. 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 I need you to think. Uh, by, the way, by the way, Tony, we're not used to defend the club. It's it's the way no, no, the no, other way it's, around. It's, we're, hey, we're, hey, we're, supposed hey. to, we're supposed to hate them, supposedly. Let, the me go the back, let me go back to what I said. For me, it's not the end of the world that they traded Camacho. For me, I can understand them trading a veteran Camacho who's at the yeah. end of his contract for $400,000 game. For me, I like Gabriele Corbo very much. It's just the timing 
that is not good and the message that's not good. But I'm going to say this, though, okay? I know you're a numbers guy, Nilton, so I need you to think about this, okay? They look at it as a business, right? Personally, I think when you're involved in professional sports, you shouldn't really look at it as a business. But, okay, let's take a look at what Miami's doing. Think about this for a second, okay? When we heard that Miami was paying Messi 50 to $60 million, and he was getting this, that, this, that, and the kitchen sink, the average fan said, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's amazing. But the other fans who wanted to look at the business perspective said, oh, my God, they're going to lose all kinds of money. Like, how are they going to do this, right? How much has their franchise gone up in value? And one day, if they want to sell, what's it going to be worth? So now I know you're a numbers guy, right? So you probably say, yeah, but, you know, we heard that the club used to lose $10 million a year. First of all, they used to lose $10 million a year. They hmm. can't lose $10 million a year anymore, my friend, because they have about a $10 million salary. They have all kinds of GAM money, which they can use to go and buy players. Yeah. Plus, they're selling out the stadium maybe every other game. So they're not losing $10 million every more, Okay. So let's just say whatever. They're breaking even. They're losing three. They're losing four. They're losing five. Let's just say you go out and get a star on this team. And you pay the star four and a half million, five million dollars the way they used to pay Nacho Piatti. Okay? And you have the star on this team for the next three, four years. And then after that, the star is gone. And another star comes. And you do the same thing with another star. Mm -hmm. Okay? How much is your franchise going to be worth? So when they came into the MLS... In 2012, and they bought it in 2011, I believe. When they came in, they started in 2012. When they bought in 2011, it was 40 million, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 11 years later, 12 years later, they're around 400 million, give or take, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So in about seven or eight years from now, they're going to be at about 750 million or more. If, it, if expansion, if expansion, Stops. Don't go there. Don't go okay. there. If expansion <laughs> stops, there's going to be investors that will be willing to pay over a billion dollars for this team. So you know your stories of, yeah, but they, they probably lost 10 million or maybe they're going to lose 5 million. Mm -hmm. Don't make mm -hmm. me cry, Sofian. Guys, <laughs> don't make me cry. Okay? <laughs> I'm just saying gonna, facts. They're I'm not just quoting the guy. They're not, they, they bought in at 40 million. They're at no. 400 million. Yes. In the next five or six years, they're going to be eight hundred million, and four or five years after that, they're going to be one point three billion. So yeah. it's worth it to invest in players. You might lose now, but you're gaining going forward. What's the difference? You're a numbers guy, Nelton. These numbers don't make sense to you. You need to take out your calculator. You want to? Put, <laughs> you, you I don't need do that. Excel <laughs> spreadsheet again? No, 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 no not for that. It, you're, you're sure, you're right about it. It sure. It, I, I'm thinking the same way for uh, for the. Uh, for the investment on superstars, but they need, like I said before, they need the correct superstar and the correct marketers to make money with this that superstar. Exactly. Right now, I don't know. They never had the possibility to market Nacho Pietti, but when they had Nacho Pietti, it was a disaster. It was the perfect poster board. He was he was a cool guy, talks French. He was spectacular on the field, and we did nothing with him. We got yeah. Drogba, we, we got we Divaya. We, we, we got before those stars, and we yeah. didn't make money with them. I, what I, I, do you think? Why do you think now yeah. they will be able to use correctly a superstar? I Why? never uh, I never interviewed Nacho Piatti. I'm willing to bet you guys never uh, interviewed Nacho yeah. Piatti, I, correct? I did. I did once. For a <laughs> post game. Oh, post game. Good guy, for yeah. you. I, I only covered the team for 20 years. I wasn't eligible hey. for that privilege yet. It wasn't a one on one. It was a no. post post game, and then we talk in the no, hallway. No. I was I recording. It's but, important. But, it's impo yeah. no. It's important when Nilton yeah. said when he said you had you need to be able to market yeah. your players because yeah. the media is here to help. They're the ally. Do you understand? They're an ally, mm -hmm. and until everyone realizes it, make your players available. Make your coach available. Make your director available. Make your president available. Make your scouts available. Make your management team. Make everybody available. Let's get the word out there. Let's go here. Let's with go the there. correct Let's people. With the correct people. Not, not, not giving not giving an interview to a guy who didn't saw the game yesterday.
Available to whom exactly? That's the question. Are we are we looking for a specific target uh, population, target media? You know, but he, make, guys, he, makes, uh, he makes a very good point. The the look. Let's put the cards did, on the table did, here. Didn't I see all the all the staff go to Les Medica Judy last year or two years ago? <laughs> was it that? I don't get it. That's not good enough. It's a big show, no? Uh, okay. <laughs> Who cares about that? Who cares? But, they they look, make look, them I, available. The, every time I heard an interview with the staff, it's, oh, Monsieur Renard, you're so nice. You're giving me minutes, blah, blah, blah. Ten minutes after. No, no, no question. So 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 pertinent. I don't know how to tell yeah, you. But, so but, but 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 Tony, I I want to remake my point about everyone wants I, to tread carefully. They want to get everyone on their yeah. side. Nobody wants to take anyone off. Everyone wants the privileges. This that yeah. whatever. This kind yeah, of journalism doesn't fly in Europe, man. It doesn't. Doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, but it, it's not confrontational here, and you can see it also in in uh, other sports. But, but you don't uh, have to be confrontational. You have to ask the questions. Yes, that the fans uh, yes. want to know. No, I agree. I agree. But okay, let me step back one second. When I talk about my, you know, all those young stars that they had two years ago, you know, you can't repeat that magic again. But and we had this debate with Nilton Kususpiripi maybe like a month ago. We said, what does the club need as a star? Drogba or Almiron? Okay. You know, the Almiron, expensive, but a good transition player from MLS to Europe, or a Drogba superstar, known francophone. He's gonna bring tickets, sell tickets, etc. Um, we had the debate, and then we thought we went a bit deeper. We said, "I would take the well, player that's more sustainable and will have more longevity." Yeah, you, uh, Almiron would be the perfect choice. But for for Montreal, Drogba was like the perfect storm. And when we talk about it on Couscous Piri Piri, was was really funny is that we're looking for a replacement for Drogba. Who could be the next Drogba? We we put a names, bring some names to come to a realization that you know what. Drogba was the only is the only good choice. It was I the disagree. perfect choice, and he came. No, 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 but in, in the I, sense, I, like, I, I think there's bigger than Drogba out there right now. Oh, right go, now, go, hey, hey, go, hey, go, go. Oh, right go. now, there's bigger than Drogba. That that will be willing to come to Montreal. No, no, yes, that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Who, okay, who's, okay. Who, who's, who's, who's show? already who's already here in this city already, and no one knows it. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, ooh, at, who's at, here? At, at, end of July. Who's here? End of July. No butler. <laughs> there we go. It's bigger than there we go, man. He got us good. He got us good. He got us good. I was gonna tweet. I was gonna tweet the scoop. I was ready. Um, no, but, butler. Uh, no butler. No uh, butler. That, that was a bad tweet. That was a bad tweet. That, that one. <laughs> the, hi, hi, the, hi, 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 mate. How are you? Uh, <laughs> Legend, no, Tony. Yeah, the, the same point I was making that the combination of Mihalovic, Alistair, Kamamoto, all these guys, Kony came maybe too soon, maybe within a five-year plan. The drug bar, I feel like, wow, he, he came at the right time. Also came too soon in the sense like because Montreal wasn't ready, marketing, what the infrastructure wasn't there to be able to boost him. But at the same time, drug bar is his own marketing machine. So maybe it would have been harder. That's why the Piada experience yes. was could have been handled better. So you're ready for Drogba. So Bielo is ready for Drogba. So DeSantis and Braz are ready for Drogba. So and and also the marketing and the sell and sales team. So they, yeah. if they can and DM me if I'm wrong about the sales team because I don't know what they did exactly. They can always DM me if tell me that we did this, this, and that. Maybe but I'm going to my easy, point. Right? The, yeah, exactly. Same thing with Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry is his own marketing machine. These but guys so are brands. So these guys are brand themselves. But Tony, let me finish on that, uh, and then uh, yeah. and then I'm done. It's Go like, ahead. Drogba kind of came too early in the sense he was perfect, but at the same time too early. So when we're trying to find the next one. I'm like, it's Drogba. He needs to come back and uh, and go and do some stem cells in his knees and really come back and run again no, because no, he, was, he was he was the perfect player, francophone, African, uh, known fantastic. everywhere in the world. He was he was perfect. He was perfect at that time. When Drogba began. was here, when Drogba was here in that first year, that was yeah. the only time since they've been in the MLS. That tickets mm. were not available. That eight of that, your friends were not calling you, asking you if you wanted. That you make it. money with your tickets, right? Because they weren't going. You're at. You're absolutely <laughs> correct. But I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Look, the Mercado. Um, it, yeah. It's nothing's going to happen this year, okay? But I'm going to tell you this, and I've said this, but I'm going to say it again. And they cannot, they cannot come back with the same plan again next year. I understand why they want to do it. Mm. They look at it as strictly business and they don't want to lose money here. So they either want to break yeah. even or make that's fine. But you know what? It's fine for the ownership. It's not fine for the fans. The fans want no part of it next year. If this is your plan, it's not going to work. Fans are going to detach. They want some ambition. 
They want some excitement. They mm. want some entertainment. You need, they listen, they've suffered long enough. There was a time here where you missed the playoffs five years in a row, okay? And there was a time last year where you were one of the better teams in the league. And when it was time to add a player to make that push to go for the championship that you didn't, and now when you have to make a push to go to the playoffs, you get rid of one of your better defenders on your team, they got to give their fans something. Look, you're spending $1.5 to $2 million on Victor Wanyama. He hardly moves, guys. Let's put the card. <laughs> guys, let's put the you're card. Talking, on the you're talking to the good guy. There's, 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 <laughs> there's, there's too many people that are yeah. just, for whatever reason, they're worried to say the real things. Guys, he hardly moves. You can get, at $2 million, a more offensive player to help you out. Or if you're willing to spend $1.5 to 2 for a CDM, wouldn't you rather spend 4 for a 10? Wouldn't you rather spend four for a nine? That's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. Guys, guys, they're, they're spending. But until, but until then, the fans need to adapt too. They need to learn how to be excited by a young guy coming from uh, South America, use MLS to be a good player and see him somewhere else after. They, get, they need to get used to that kind, not only that kind of project, but this kind of project the fans need to understand that 95% of football club works that way. I'm not against the idea to bring to the, to uh, to uh, englobe entouré that yeah, team yeah. with some with some stars with Insulate. some local guys. Insulate. It, yeah. Yeah, we need that combination right now and you're I'm I'm with you at 100% since day one giving that kind of millions on a defensive midfield when you have already won And he's a local guy, captain. It was a stupid idea from Thierry Henry and that we renew him because we told we told ourselves, ah, oh, maybe it was the, the key for the development of Kone. He's going to be the key again to the development of Saliba. It, uh, was. it was. It, it was. It was. But, Come on, he was. Yeah, it was. But that kind, we, we don't have a limited budget to do that, those yeah. kinds. We have to, to choose, to pick and choose, and maybe those kind of money on those v veterans In Montreal, it wasn't the smartest idea. So who have uh, who? You, you can't say that he helped develop and it wasn't the smartest idea. You can't have both. Okay, the the cat is not alive; is not dead in the same time in the box. Bonegro's cat for people who are listening. It's wow. it's it's <laughs> it's impossible. You cannot he cannot be good and bad at the same time. He's either good or bad. He can be gray, mitigé, whatever you want to call it. A gray a gray a gray zone for his performance. But I think Wanyama is a good investment. Yes, he could have been more offensive, but. It worked perfectly with Nancy. He was top top defensive midfielder in MLS. MLS were talking about it. All the media was talking about him. Look at this guy. He's basically because the system unknown. was there for him. So, exactly. So guys, That's guys, what, what I'm is, saying. The what, system. So, yeah, the what system, is, guys. What does the back line look like now? Corbo as center back, at left center back, Campbell, at right at the right center back, Waterman, and uh, Thorkelson and Alvarez and Jabang are the Extras? Is that about right? Is that what you yeah. think? Yeah, that's the depth chart in a way. Yeah. So you're not you're not thinking that Corbo is going to stay at left center back and Gregory Campbell is uh, going to be the center back? No, I'm not. Uh, not I'm not that sure. Well, that, uh, you know what? They, they, they seem to push Campbell a lot. It's like they really want to make him work because it was a big investment. So almost a million dollars in GAM, basically a huge investment. And uh, he's made some. He's, he's looked very slow at times this year. And he's yeah, made meaning. some very poor passes when pressed out of the back. Mm. There's been a lot of a lot of giveaways. But he needs it, those minutes, it, it's, man. It sounds like Rudy Camacho when he was first in Montreal in the first two, three years. You, you know what? I didn't like Camacho his first year, year and a half in Montreal. I didn't. Was, You're right. It was about horrendous. That. It was horrendous. But, you know, and Nilton, I know that you when at the beginning of the show when we talked about it, you said, "Yeah, but Camacho in the first couple of years." You're right. But mm -hmm. I'll also I'll also add this, Nilton George. Weren't you better? Haven't you been better in the last three years of your job than you were in the first two years of your job? Sofian Benzaza, I'll ask you the same question because I can tell you right now, Tony Marinaro in the first year, a year and a half on the job, I wasn't very good. Yeah, yeah. but he wasn't a rookie. He was 26. He came to a new city, to a yeah, new culture, yeah. to a new environment, to new to teammates, a new city. to a new league. <laughs> and you know what? City. And you know That's what? City. Here's the deal. Did you see <laughs> Of course you did. When you saw Messi's first game, oh. there were times where you were wondering, hey, it doesn't look all that good here before he scored the free kick goal, okay? Yeah, yeah. But 
a lot of the players on the field, they weren't seeing the game the way he was. They they weren't reading the game the way he was. So no, uh, what, else, what, yeah. you know, what I'm trying to say with for yeah, Camacho, when a player comes from Europe, he, he, you know, he expects the player to be in a certain position and the player's not there. So if he passes the ball, the player's not there. He looks bad. But is it really him that looks bad? Anyway, I'm not going to make any – I'm not going to cover for him. I'm not going to make any excuses. Exactly. The, I, same I, logic I for Messi, the same logic for Messi I use for Wanyama. Put him in the right system, he's going to play fine. <laughs> Boom. I'm right. Boom. <laughs> you know what? Like, no. yeah, like I said, no. you can't no. be good Nelton, and bad. Same Nelton, logic, Nel guys. Nelton same and logic. I are right. You're going to invest in a DP 1.5 to 2. Invest in a more offensive DP. Invest you can do in both. Somebody. You can hey, do both. Hey, hey, is, no, the average fan gonna, is the average fan going to leave their house to go watch Victor Wanyama? No. no. But they have Mialovic, Kone. I'm going to go to the Park to watch Turtles. It won't cost me nothing. <laughs> hey, is, this hey, hey. is this a joke Yo, or what? They had Kyoto, Mialovic, Kone, <laughs> Alistair Johnson. They had those guys. They had them. They were there. Oh, Wanyama so was there. Jimmy, Jimmy Bria would go watch the score. Oh, uh, but uh, he, he wants he want some paper signed before. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, he, he, but uh, he, he wanted the true. car. What can I tell you? He wanted the car. <laughs> hey guys, this Which is one, the, uh, the Hyundai or the Macan. I'm not this sure. is this has that. been a this has been a lot of fun. Uh, once again, uh, I I don't look. I don't think CF Montreal. Actually, I know CF Montreal did not trade Maldini today. They didn't trade <laughs> Beckenbauer today. Oh, they didn't trade Ramos today. And but I think and I, so I don't know. I, I I think the fans are just a lot of it is they considered him a good Shinu, even though he wasn't and. I think there's a lot of accumulation of frustration. I think people are waiting for people to come out and say, hey, you know what? I know you think we don't care about the team, but we do. Yeah. And this is what we're going to do because, look, on the surface, it doesn't look like the club is priority number one right now. Let's be honest. Do we agree with that? When you get stopped in the street, do the fans mm. tell you no that they me, think no. – Never been. Never been. You no. never been what? It never been the top priority, the club for the fans in Montreal. No, Maybe not one the week. Fans. No, not the fans. What I'm saying oh, is the fans right now don't think the club oh. here is the top priority for the owner. Uh, but oh. they say the same. But they say the same in Italy. If you read newspapers in Bologna, they say the same. No, 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 no matter what, Joe Sapuro is the, is the Darth Vader. He's evil and everything, even though he invests invest money. And I think people should just manage the expectation a bit better. That's all. It's been 12 years in MLS. We know what's going to happen. Let's not be too surprised. And yeah, I, I, like honestly, he the best thing he did, uh, Joe Sapuro, was to be able to get away from the DDT operation. Does he make decisions that we don't know about? I'm sure he does. If I put money in a company, I guarantee you, I will put my nose in every big decision that needs to be made. Guaranteed. But is he is he less day to day? It feels like it, or maybe he's using Ronald and Gervais buffer, which is also a good tactic to use. Not be able not to be the public figure, not tweet anymore, not uh, do a last minute interviews on the radio and saying that you know I should have I prefer two two three players at two million than one player at six million. You know, they, they communicate. The marketing of the club also starts with the owner, and I think you did a what? good job. Get you know away, what? get away from it. I, I, I think I disagree with you. Of course, you because do. you of course I do because you just <laughs> said that you basically just said that when Joey Saputo would do interviews every now and then he would say stuff that made people's eyebrows raise right by saying it. But you know what, uh, Sofian, we talked about it. Yeah, that's true. And we talked about it in the media, and we opened up the phone calls, and we took but... phone calls, and we got text messages, and we got comments, and we got tweets, and we could do Twitter mm -hmm. questions of the day, and this and that. Yes. And right now, mm -hmm. if there's radio silence, uh, hey, they're going to be playing their next game in 20 days. Eh? In 20 make, days, they're going to be um, playing their next game. I'm eager to see the media what they're going to cover. But uh, it's not – listen – Tony, I agree with you. I miss the bus from Joe Saputo. Most presidents in Europe and outside North America, they really, you know, are, they, are they're the like image of the club after the coach and sporting director. But I was responding to the idea that it's a good thing that Joe Saputo doesn't meddle himself as much as we think he does or doesn't, at least when we see him from when we hear as much as before, except for the Wilfred Nancy incident. That was, you know, a, a classic move. But 
that's it, you know, and, and expect a press conference from Oliver Renard in the next few days to talk about this trade and talk about the mercado strategy of the club. And uh, hopefully he doesn't attack anyone personally again. And uh, we'll, we'll, <laughs> whoa, 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 Hey, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Why did he ever attack? Why did you ever feel attacked? No, no, no. no but someone will. Someone you, will. Sure. You're, talking, yeah, you're, yeah. Talking, you're talking about me? No, no, no. It's a no, no, no. Never, <laughs> no. never, never, never. Never talking about this. Yeah. No, I listen. <laughs> Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with him. Me I don't either. have a problem with. I, I just think that uh, the um, once again the message should be a little bit different. But um, they're doing it their way, and you know, like they're very good at what they do. Yeah. But I think I'm very good at what I do, and what I do is media and communications. And I've been involved in the game for 20 years. And I'm telling you before, you might not see it mm -hmm. right away in the stands. But take a look at the reaction on social media. They're starting to be a detached. People still love this team because they've loved it. Mm -hmm. Some of them have loved it since the early 90s. So there's still that love there. But you know what? They're, they're, I'm telling you, they're waiting for a level of excitement. They're waiting for a player. They're waiting for a star. They're waiting for that ambition level to be increased. That's the, the way I think they got to go. They want to do it their way that, you know, whatever they sell, if they can make money on, they'll sell. That's fine. You know, I know people that use eBay and uh, and uh, Facebook uh, Marketplace for stuff like that. Not the, yeah. not a team, <laughs> you know. But there, there is something something worse than being hated is to be that people are are indifferent towards you. And yes, the club needs to avoid that their own fan becomes indifferent towards them, and they want to avoid that. Would that happen soon? We will see mid-August and August when they come back. On that note, open invitation to anyone who wants to come on the SICK podcast, CF Montreal talk from the club to talk about the team, the direction, everything. Uh, hey, guys, thank you for accepting the invitation. I really thank appreciate you. it. And what thank I hope you. will be the first time of many, Nilton George and Sofian Benzaza of Can Football Club and Couscous Piri Piri at Marinaro. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. And on Twitter, at SickPod, CFMTL. Ciao for now. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.